Breakouts 2.0 coming up on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5 on Wednesday, March 6th. I am Frank Stample, joined by Scott White. And let's just rattle off some breakouts, Scott. See how many we can get to. You're up first. All right. Yes, let's talk about Christopher Morell, who I didn't include in my breakouts 1.0 for a very good reason. I didn't think he had a job for the Cubs. Uh, they didn't seem to like his defense in the outfield. They seemed full there anyway, and that's before they brought back Cody Bellinger. He got most of his time at DH last year, did Morell, and, and it didn't seem like that was going to be consistently available to him. But lo and behold, the Cubs have decided to move him to third base. He still has to win the job. Um, and it, it may be that he just doesn't pass the defensive test there, but it seems like that's very much what they want to happen because they realize they have a special hitter in Christopher Morell, and uh, they want to they want to find a place they can put him. What makes him special is he hits the crap out of the ball. <laughs> His <laughs> average exit velocity last year ninety first percentile, uh, barrel rate ninety fifth percentile, hard hit rate ninety second percentile. Like just in terms of quality of contact, he is among the elites. Really, uh, strikes out thirty percent of the time, which is going to limit his batting average, put him through hot and cold stretches. But when you're hitting the ball that hard, you can overcome that. And you just look at the numbers Christopher Morel was pacing on last year. Um, you know, in and out of the lineup, because like I said, he didn't really have a defensive home, but 26 homers and even six steals in 107 games, that's 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 30-15 potential uh, for a guy who'll be outfield and eventually third base eligible. First breakout for me, Scott, let's go Cubs. Seiya Suzuki, 112.6 is the ADP, 26th outfielder off the board. Weird 2023 season last year, delayed with an oblique injury. Once he returned, he hit well through the month of May, then completely lost it. For June and July, then manager David Ross said that Suzuki was in between with his swing, got a few mental days off early in August. Over his final 47 games, triple slash, 356, 414, 672, with 11 home runs at a 13% barrel rate. I think all the skills are there. He hits the ball hard, good plate discipline. He's fast. I think it all comes together this season for Seiya Suzuki. Hits 280 plus, 30 homers, 10 to 15 steals, Book it. Mm -hmm. Massive season. Scott, back to you. Bo Naylor uh, of the Guardians, who doesn't seem to be getting quite the same hype as other up-and-comers like Francisco Alvarez and, and Logan O'Hoppy, but I think it's just because he got to, off to a slow start for the Guardians last year. In his final 28 games, Bo Naylor hit 321, seven homers, four steals, exactly the names, same number of walks as strikeouts, and that's in just 28 games, remember. Monster production over that stretch that the scouting reports sort of back up. I mean, in, in terms of him being a base stealing catcher and a really disciplined hitter, uh, definitely. That means his skill set is well suited for both categories in points leagues. And he's kind of become my favorite catcher to draft, uh, particularly in one catcher leagues where you can get him so late. I, I prefer Bo Naylor to Mitch Garver, I think. The ADP for Bo Naylor, 238.4 as the 15th catcher off the board. Next breakout for me, Nolan Gorman. Currently being drafted 184th with as the 18th second baseman off the board. He technically already broke out last year, hit 236 with 27 home runs and seven steals. He did all of that in only 119 games. The power is supported by the stat cast numbers. His 498 X slug was in the 87th percentile, 16.5% barrel rate, 97th percentile. Nolan Gorman improved against left-handed pitching, hit 260 with an 840 OPS, so I do think he's an everyday player. The next step, health. He needs to uh, stay on the field. He has dealt with a back injury dating back to 2020 uh, due to a weightlifting accident, but read an article that Nolan Gorman changed his nutrition this offseason, so the hope is he stays on the field, and if he does that, I think we get 30, 35 home runs, uh, and chips in some sneaky steals as well. That is Nolan Gorman. Scott, back to you for another breakout. Jake Berger, who we talk about a lot, but I want to stress it again here in breakouts because I think there's I think there's another level he can reach, and I think it's basically what he showed after he was traded to the Marlins last year. It was a one-dimensional hitter with the White Sox, hit the ball very hard, but struck out 31.6% of the time, which led to a 214 batting average. Goes to the Marlins, cuts that strikeout rate down to 20. 2%. That's 303. 
And he did it on purpose. It, it sounded it, like he actually made an effort to tone down his swing because he realized he was uh, compromising his overall upside, didn't need to swing so hard to, to still hit it out of the park. And he was exactly right. In fact, even toning down his swing to cut down his strikeout rate 10 percentage points and improve his batting average by nearly 100, still 11 of his 17 hardest hit balls on the year came with the Marlins. I'm not saying he's going to hit 300 over a full season, but 275 seems within the realm of possibility for Berger with 40 homer upside. Uh, you know, I, I think he'll finish in the 30s at the very least. And, and Berger is the main reason why, particularly in categories leagues, uh, I, I tend to wait a long time to draft my third baseman. I know Jake Berger was the player you love this year, Scott, but we might have to uh, we might have to share Jake Berger because man, I am a big fan as well. Let's wrap up with a pitcher here, Gavin Williams. The ADP is one eighty point eight as the fifty first starting pitcher off the board. Kind of the forgotten former pitching prospect. Looks like an ace, six foot six, averages ninety six miles per hour on the fastball. Two strong breaking pitches with the slider and the curve. Both get whiffs. Both limit hard contact. He is currently working on a changeup to help get lefties out. So I love to read that. And a 12% swinging strike rate last year as a rookie. The strikeouts are there. Needs to improve the control. That's the next step. Four walks per nine last year for Gavin Williams. 10.7% walk rate. That ranked in the 20th percentile. But I do believe in the Guardians pitching development. I think the control improves this year. The strikeouts will be there. I think we can get a big breakout season from Gavin Williams. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the Odyssey app, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5, and we'll be back again tomorrow. Bye-bye. 